What's up, MMA fans? Today we're catching up with Master Rafael Cordeiro from Kings MMA. How are you, Master? What's up, Marcelo? Always good talking to you, my brother. Yeah, and talking about Kings MMA, I've heard you You guys are coming to Brazil finally. Is, it, is that true? It's true. I'm super excited. We have three options in Brazil, three cities, Curitiba, Atibaia, and Florianópolis. Florianópolis is the place where Fabrício lives. So I'm super excited. We're having one month and I have 38 offers. It's such it's a huge for a business, 38 offers in one month and I have. And solid business. Now we have three schools already done. And I'm super excited to go to Brazil, back to Brazil with schools and share our knowledge. Great, man. Talking, talking about Kings, let me ask you about your athletes. Uh, Marvin Vettori, after beats uh, Paulo Borrachim Acosta, he's already scheduled to face uh, Robert Whittaker. And is he already doing his camp for that fight? How is that going? Marvin, now he's in Italy. He spent some time with his family. So he's finished his last fight. He trained a little bit in the gym and then he traveled to Italy. So he's super excited about this fight. He knows if he beat Whittaker, he have another chance to fight for the belt. Knowing that maybe what... Uh, and Sean Stickler, maybe the winner can fight for the belt as well. So we are there. We are there to do our job. We have to focus on Whitaker. We know how hard he is. We're going to do a hard game plan, a solid game plan for this fight. I believe it's going to be a war as the way it has to be. Two guys highlight with high, high, high level skills, with high, high level skills. But I believe Marvin, at the end of the day, have options, with options, they have a good apples. And he have everything to beat with as well. Uh, I, I heard uh, last time we talked, you told me Strickland uh, trained a couple of times in Kings MMA, and he's going to fight to Poitin. And, 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 and also your athlete, your student, Andre Gida, was the coach of Bruno Blindado against Poitin. So I imagine you guys are you know, you know, uh, I studied a little bit about Poitain and also, of course, you know Strickland. How do you see that fight? It's going to be a war. Stickler is, is uh, such a hard guy to train with. He's long. He moves all over the place. He hit hard as well. He has good cardio. He loves to do sparring. Uh, his main train is sparring. He's sparring all over the place. He's sparring a few times in the Kings, at Kings with Marvin. He helped Marvin a lot. That's the same way Marvin helped him as well. So, but you talk about what uh, the guy didn't beat the champ twice and the guy didn't have a lot of experience inside the uh, kickboxing war. So he can, can be, can sh looks like a beginner in MMA, if you think about a designer that has 20 fights, but he has a lot of experience inside the fights. So when he proved, when he stepped inside the octagon, he can put, he can put, he can put a great show there. I believe this fight is going to be a great fight. A little advantage, in my opinion, a little, little advantage for Quata, but uh, it's going to be a great fight. I'm excited to see you guys for sure. As the same way they like to exchange, it's different. Quata is a little bit more solid, and Stickler, he moved too much forward. It's going to be like precisions, I guess. Let's fight. So I believe Quata is more precision guy. If, Stickler, he's more like attack. It doesn't matter if you hit him or not, he's still moving forward. It's going to be an interesting fight. And uh, what about Darius, uh, Rafael? He's going to, he, he got some problem. Can you explain what happened exactly to him? Uh, he, that he lost the fight with Makashev and, and also uh, Bobby Green uh, replaced him. What happened and what you expect for the fight that Dana just confirmed that? Uh, that you should fight Makashev again. So Benny was doing his last train and during his train, he was wrestled one week, one week before the fight and one day before the travel. So he was doing his train, his wrestling train. I was not there, I was in the gym. I, he was in Anaheim, I was in Huntington Beach. And then his last takedown, on his last takedown, he hurt himself, his ankle. And then he come from hospital, hey master, I just, have a little fracture in my bone and problem. I'm, I can't put my foot on the floor. I can't walk. And I, can't, I can't even walk. I said, man, don't worry. Most important is your health. This fight's going to happen 100%. And 
as soon as we know that uh, he jumped off the fight against uh, Rafael dos Anjos, we say for sure that I still looking for this fight. And when he's still held, probably four or five months he's gonna be able to fight. At the moment he can do nothing about his foot. He still barely start walking yet. We need a little bit more time to start our camp. But the nice thing is that then I saved this date for Makashev and Benny. And in my humble opinion, it's gonna be one of the best fights in that division because both had the same fire in their eyes to fight forward. But I believe in the, in the end of the day, Benny has a little bit more weapon than him. Great. Uh, Rafael, just a uh, curiosity. Charles do Bronx today is the champion. He's from Shootbox team and your athlete. You have the origin of Shootbox. Uh, have you talked to Master Rudimar already about the possibility of having a Shootbox clash for the title? For sure. First of all, we have to worry about Makashev, 100%. But if you beat Makashev, it's going to be a great fight. Because at the end of the day, the victor comes from shoot box. This good that I come from, and I'm proud to be. I'm proud that I come from shoot box. Everything that I know inside martial arts comes from that school. I came to United States, but I'm still in my heart. My heart still shoot box. I know what I'm teach more than techniques. I know what I'm saying to my fighters. I know what I have to say during good moments. I know what I have to say during bad moments. But this is what we learn inside martial arts. Different MMA. Maybe most of the times people want to learn what they want to learn, what they want to hear. Martial arts, no. You want to hear what you have to hear. You want to learn by that. So this is what I learned inside shoot box. And we're still a kid because martial arts is never got old. I'm still a kid inside martial arts. And this is what I believe. Many you can put a great show as the same way Charles, in the end of the day, the winner is going to be shoot box. Uh, wh what about Giga Shikadze? He got a uh, straight, impressive wins over at uh, Barbosa and many other guys, and he lost the last one to Kelvin Kidder. Uh, how, how he faced the first loss in UFC, and, and how is he behaving in the tournament, back in the tournament in his MMA? So as soon as he the fight, he was a little bit upset, but I remember the first phrase was like, uh, I went there before, we went there before. I know what is this, so we know what is this. I say, per perfect. This is what we want to hear. No, somebody, oh, no, no. Giga was like, uh, we will be back. We will be back. And this is what he did. He did a surgery in his nose. So he had a problem. He broke before, before the fight, he was broken during sparring in the gym. And then he had to do, so he did surgery probably four or five months as, as well. He took a little bit of time off. He back to Georgia to be with his family there. But he's super excited. He look forward to the division, see what's going to happen for him, what Dana planned for him. By the time then he'll be back, we want to know for sure what, who's going to be the next opponent for him. What about Gaston, Rafael? The last tournament he did a little bit with Andy Serrudo, which is a very good fan of yours. And is he, he, he coming back to Kings to make the other camp? What's the plan for, for Gaston? I believe that moment, Marcelo, the best thing to do is work his rest. We have our plan in the gym. We have our guys in the gym. But when we talk about Arizona, we talk about Kelvin's land, where he come from, his family, his mom, his sister. And I'm excited to see him work hard every single day with Serhuda there, because this is his roots, where I feel comfortable to. Serhuda make part of our family, but I believe that moment now, Kelvin has to put all his energy inside the rest, something that we miss a little bit in our last fights. And not, nothing better than a guy like Serhut to bring back his confidence inside the wrestling world. And he bring, for sure, he brought, because the kid is more than, he's on fire to fight. The fight was canceled against the guy he was supposed to fight. They brought somebody from South Africa. A tough guy, tough guy. I believe this guy, this guy is 16 2 or 14 2, something like that. Something like that. Tough guy, tough guy. As the guys that as the guys that Kelvin fought, fought during the, his last six, seven, eight fights. So Kelvin never had have a, a easy fight during his career. So sometimes when you have a tough loss, it's hard to take another tough name, another tough name, another tough name without time to recover. It's not a, uh, please, it's not a, like a excuse. It's not a Manuel do Cagalhão. <laughs> 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 when we lost, we lost. 
But sometimes, if you have opportunity to take a time, you see a good opponent for you, make a lot of difference. I see when you talk about tough guys, I was looking to that a uh, few minutes before the interview. He faced it. Gastelum faced it. Whitaker, Jan Hainish, uh, Hermanson, Darren Till, Israel Adesanya. And before those guys, he beat it. Michael Bisping, former champion of the division, and Ronaldo Jacaré. So uh, it's not it's not Manuel do Cagalhão for sure. Yeah. The guy is, the guy is a beast. He never say no for for hard challenge. No. Yeah, I say and, and... no. I say no. He never say no. <laughs> and uh, but uh, like I said before, my feeling with Kelvin is the same as as Fabrizio. I love all those kids. I'm never gonna see they got hurt. Sometimes you see something, then I can't help. I want to make sure somebody will help better than me. And that moment, I believe he did the right thing to put his mind on wrestling. What about Shogun, Rafael? He's going to fight Ufim Sampru. Many people are thinking, is, is it going to be his last fight? And how do you see that fight? He fought Ufim Sampru back on 2014. So eight years later, how do you see that fight between Shogun and Ufim Sampru? It's going to be a great fight. Yeah. It's going to be a great mar fight, Marcelo. Uh, Shogun is, al is always excited to fight against guys that he fought before, especially this guy. He trained hard. He trained, he's really motivated to fight. He trained with Danielzinho, the guy that helped him. He's my black belt as well. He's the kid from Curitiba that helped him from his last camps. Danielzinho was there helping him. And uh, he's always he, Shogun is always motivated to fight. So he loved the atmosphere, the UFC atmosphere. And I don't believe it's going to be his last fight. I believe after this fight, he's going to figure out a way to fight again. I believe inside the UFC, he's going to do something for sure there. Or outside, you never know, because you never know. But I believe he's going to do something inside the UFC, because the UFC loves him as well. And Shogun loves fight. He never mentioned, OK, I want to stop. I believe it's time to stop. He never mentioned that. He always, I want to fight this guy. And then after this fight, I want to fight this guy. And then he always points, he always names somebody. And I believe it's going to be a great fight. Uh, we lost last fight. I was not with him in the corner, but my heart was there with him when he lost. But I believe he has the skills to beat his opponent. In all aspects, he has to be a little bit more calm. Uh, we have to remind him he has his own style to move forward all the time, but sometimes you have to calm down, see what is in front of you, feel the atmosphere, and then move forward, or move it backwards if you have to fight this fight. This he learned after his last fight against OCP, and I believe he's going to prove inside the octagon he is a better man with that. And talking about return, is, is it possible we see Mike Tyson again? How is, how is Iron Tyson training with you? Mike, he does a lot of private class with me. He's such a nice guy, guy that, I, that I love. He travels a lot, too. He travels all over the United States. He has his own company, Tyson 2.0 Cannabis. He's a number one in California, so he sells all over the place. He goes for, for um, open stores. He opens stores all over the place. He travels a lot. He has time to train. He comes, he train with me. He does his meetings with me. If the fight's going to be a good fight, is it? If not, I don't believe so. Because the brand, Tyson 2.0, is so su successful now. I don't believe he's going to back to fight right now. If the guys offer some money, good money, he goes. If not, he's really, he appreciates all his love, all the people, love people do to him about his brand. And uh, I don't believe he's going to fight. For a good offer, he's like Fabrizio. For a good yeah, offer. I, I would ask you exactly you that. Know, what, like exactly Fabrice. like Fabrice. Fabrice. A right money is there. <laughs> <laughs> so Fabrice is not retired uh, uh, for sure. No, he's not. He, he, he keep fighting. He look for fights uh, that makes sense for him. He never say I'm stopped. For now, he has his own thing in Brazil. Uh, Verdun Premium Meets is something is something huge in Brazil right now. He open. They, they, estimate, they, they estimate to open 200 stars till the end of the year. It's something huge for a brand in Brazil. So he's super excited with that. He never stopped training. He's doing his boxing, his jiu-jitsu training, his white tie training. But nothing about fight for now. But Fabrice is a businessman, as Mike. If something happened, offer the right thing, for sure he's going to fight, for sure. But I don't want to say he got retired. But I believe that doing, uh, 
fight in the right room, in the right place, why not? To finish, Neyman Gracie, is there any challenge for him coming up? You, you're doing a great job with him. You're making him a great striker, as he proved in the last fight, five rounds against a, a tough guy like Storley. And, and is, is there any plan for him, any fight schedule? He already asked for fights. He spoke with Ali. Ali is, a, is the guy. Ali, is, he managed 9% nine, 9 of my fighters. He taking care of all my fighters. He's such an amazing person as well, Ali. And uh, he helped Neymar as well. He looked for fights for Neymar. He wants to fight as, as, fast as, as fast as he can. And I believe he's going to put a great show. He just got in bed in battle. He's young inside martial arts. He was, was Jiu-Jitsu guy. They become a striker. He's becoming, he's becoming a strike. And I'm excited with that. And uh, I believe that his future for him is going to be great. One more fight, one more tough fight. He has a tough fight right now. They proved that he crossed the line. He never was there. He never been there before. You know, five rounds, two punches in the face, knocked down, take knocked down, took knocked down, stand up, boom. You know, all over, he was all over the place. He never felt that before. But he was ready for that. He did five rounds as like a like a kid, flying like a kid. And I believe his future is a is a brilliant. He has good techniques, has good heart. He came from the royal family, which means the guys never give up. And I believe Neymar is the future of his division. One step back, that can change the future. One hundred percent can't change the future. Five was always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks a lot for the nice talk. Good as always. Marcelo, my brother, for you any time, any place, brother, count me in. You know how much I appreciate you and everything you have done for, for the Brazilian community all over the all over, for all over for all over the place. So you went there and all over the place represent us. And uh, we're very proud to have you by our side. And uh, people know us. If people know us today, because of guys like you. Thanks a lot, man.